Hello everyone and welcome to another at Maths tutorial video. Now I'll be discussing Form 5 Additional Mathematics Chapter 8 Kinematics in a Straight Line Long Question Example 3. Okay, before that, please like this video to show your support and subscribe to the channel for more upcoming mathematics tutorial videos in the future. Okay, let me read the question now. The velocity of particle A VA meter per second is given by VA is equals to 12 minus 2 T and the acceleration of particle B AB meter per second square is given by AB is equals to 6 minus 60 where T is the time in seconds after passing through O. The velocity of particle B when passing through O is 9 meter per second. So the question asks to find the velocity of particle A when particle B comes instantaneously to rest the maximum velocity of particle B and the time when particle A and particle B meet again. So this is the overall question. So I hope that you will attempt this question in the future. If you could manage to solve this question, a big thumbs up to you guys. But if you can't solve this question, no worries. I'm going to show you the step by step working and the solution. So without further delay, let us start to solve the question. Let us begin our discussion for the question part A where we need to find the velocity of particle A when particle B comes instantaneously to rest. When a particle is at instantaneously rest, that means that the velocity will be becoming zero. So we need to find the time when the velocity becomes zero and that time we're going to use to find the velocity of particle A. So this is the overall idea on how we're going to solve this question. So let us begin our working for the question part A. So from here, I'm going to write for particle B to be in instantaneous rest. So from here, your velocity of the particle B should be equals to zero. So let me box this. Okay. But then we have a problem here guys. The question only gave us the acceleration of particle B, not the velocity of particle B. So how to find the velocity? It's very simple guys. You integrate the acceleration with respect to time. So from here you should get the velocity of particle B. Okay, so from here let us continue our working. So from here velocity of particle B will be equals to integration of acceleration of particle B with respect to dt okay in this case is time okay so from here velocity of particle b will be equals to integral okay in a bracket acceleration of particle b is 6 minus 60 so you just substitute over here so in this case 6 minus 60 close bracket in respect to dt okay so you perform this integration so from here you get velocity of particle b is equals to 60 minus 3t square plus with c okay so from here the question also mentioned that the velocity of particle b when passing through o is 9 meter per second so this is meaning that when t is equal to 0 your velocity of particle b is equal to 9 meter per second so let us write it down over here when t is equal to 0 so from here your velocity of particle b will be equals to 9 meter per second so from here what you're going to do is we're going to substitute these two value into this equation over here so from here 9 will be equals to 6 times with 0 minus 3 times with 0 square plus with c okay please wait guys so let me write this properly zero square plus with c so you calculate this so from here you should get your c is equals to nine okay and hence you get your velocity of particle b is equals to 6t minus 3t square plus nine okay so up until now i hope you guys understand the working that i'm showing to you Okay, so from here, what you're going to do is we're going to set our velocity of particle B is equals to zero. Okay, so from here, when 
velocity of particle B equals to zero. So from here, 60 minus with 3 t square plus with 9 will be equals to 0. So you move everything from the left hand side to the right hand side. So from here you get 3 t square minus 60 minus 9. It will be equals to 0. So from here you can simplify this quadratic equation by dividing the whole equation by 3. So from here you get t square minus 2t minus 3 is equals to 0. Okay, now we can perform the factorization of this quadratic equation. So when you factorize this, so from here you get t minus 3 and t plus 1 equals to 0. So you have two possible answer when your velocity of particle b is equal to 0. However, you need to be careful guys. You need to know that your time can never be a negative value. Hence, you can only have one possible answer where your t will be equal to 3 second. Okay, and your t can never be equal to negative 1. Okay, so let me underline this. Okay, so once we get the time, so now what you're going to do is we're going to substitute this time into the velocity of particle A equation, guys. So from here, when time is equal to 3 seconds, So from here, your velocity of particle A will be equals to 12 minus 2. Okay, now you substitute the 3 in this equation. So from here, 12 minus with 6. So from here, you get your velocity of particle A is equals to 6 meter per second. So this is your answer for the question part A. So let me underline the solution. Okay, so from here, let us proceed our discussion for the question part B. For the question part B, we are required to find the maximum velocity of particle B. Okay, so to find the maximum velocity of particle B, so we need to differentiate our velocity with respect to time and we need to set it equals to zero. Yes, it is similar to the turning point concept which you have learned in the differentiation. So that is the concept that we are going to apply here. Okay, so from here. To find maximum velocity of particle B, okay, so from here you differentiate velocity with respect to time, okay, and you set it equals to zero. Okay, like I said, it's similar to the turning point. Okay. Since in the question, they already gave us the acceleration of the particle B, you can just use the acceleration of particle B value over here, guys. Okay, since the acceleration is also equals to the differentiation of velocity with respect to time. Okay, so from here, dV over dt is equals to 6 minus 6t. Okay, and you set it equals to 0. Okay, so from here, 6t will be equals to 6. So you calculate this, so from here you should get your t is equals to 1 second. Okay, so let me underline this. Okay, so once you get this time, so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this time value into the velocity of particle b. So from here, when time is equals to 1 second, so from here, your velocity of particle B will be equals to 6 times with 1 minus 3 times with 1 square plus with 9. Okay, so from here, 
6 minus 3, you get is 3. 3 plus 9, you get is 12. So from here, you should get your velocity of particle B is equal to 12 meter per second. So this is your maximum velocity of particle B. So let me underline the solution for the question part B. Okay, so from here, let us proceed our discussion for the question part C now. Let us proceed our discussion for the question part C where we need to find the time when particle A and particle B meet again. So in order for the particle A and particle B to meet again, the displacement of particle A should be same as the displacement of particle B. So this equation is very important. From this equation, we are going to solve the question. Okay, so from here, let us begin our working for the question part C. So in our working, so let me write here, the displacement of particle A should be same as the displacement of particle B. So let me box this. Okay, so the step one, what we need to do is we need to find the displacement of the particle A. So let me write in the working here, step one, find displacement of particle A. So from here, the displacement is equals to the integration of velocity with respect to time. So from here, your displacement will be equals to integral of 12 minus 2t with respect to dt. Okay, so you perform the integration. So from here, you get your displacement is equals to 12 t minus with t square plus with c okay so sorry guys it's a little bit hanging okay so from here the question give us the condition that when your time is equal to zero your s is equal to zero so let me write here as well so when time is equal to zero your displacement or also known as the s is equals to zero okay so how do we know that okay it's given that where t is in the time in seconds after passing through o same for the particle a and particle b guys okay it's applicable for both particles so that is why I come up with this condition. So from here, you should get your displacement of particle A is equals to 12t minus t square. So let me underline this. Okay, so once you get the displacement of particle A, so the next step is finding the displacement of particle B. So step two, find displacement of particle B. So from here, the similar concept, your displacement will be equals to integration of velocity with respect to time. Okay, so from here, your displacement will be equals to integral of, okay, the velocity of particle B, which in this case is 60, okay, minus 3, t square plus with 9 okay with respect to dt so you perform this integration so from here you get your s equals to 3 t square minus t cube plus 9t plus with c okay so let me copy paste this so this condition is also applicable for particle B guys okay when your time is equal to 0 your displacement is equal to 0 so from here you should get your displacement of particle B is equals to 3 t square minus t cube plus 9 t so let me underline this okay 
So once we find the displacement A and displacement B, now we can proceed for this calculation guys, where your displacement of particle A is equal to displacement of particle B. Okay, so from here, as A is equals to as B, so let us write it down. So tw 12 T minus T square is equals to 3 T square minus T cube plus with 9 T. Okay. So from here, you calculate this. So from here, you should get T cube minus with 4 T square plus with 3 T is equals to 0. Okay. So from here, what you do, you factor out the T. Okay. So from here, you're only left with T square minus with 4t plus with 3 okay close bracket equals to 0 okay so from here since we have already formed a quadratic equation now we can further factorize this so from here you get t in a bracket t minus 1 okay and then close bracket 3 I mean t minus 3 is equals to 0 okay so you have three possible answer where your t can be equals to 0 or t can be equals to 1 or t can be equals to 3 okay so you read the question carefully it mentioned that the times when particle A and particle B meet again. So this meet again indicates that your particle has already start to move. Okay. So in this case, when T is equal to 0, can no longer be applicable. Okay. So from here, the only possible answer you can have is T equals to 1 second and T is equal to 3 second. So from here, your final answer will be T is equal to 1 second and t is equal to 3 seconds. So let me underline the solution for the question part C. Okay, so that is all for the step by step working and solution for this question. I hope you understand the full working that I've shown to you. If you like this video, please give your thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more upcoming mathematics tutorial videos in the future and not to forget to share this video. Thank you everyone for your support and I'll see you in the next video.